Now, tonight, how things work takes a short break. KTN's Betty Kello has brought you 20 episodes of the information segment, and we end on a high note. Betty visited the Kumburu Power Station and now shows you how power is generated, plus a recap of previous episodes. Take a look. <music> When How Things Work was born, we gained momentum as fast as the top speed of a Bugatti Veyron. Moving fast, going up in the skies. We're currently flying 35,000 feet and exploring Kenya. Using all means we could to get to our destinations. We showed you the strong and mighty, and we made sure you liked it. This thing is huge! Wine, Betty, is to be enjoyed with all the senses. We opened up to you. And so did many other high-flying institutions. And because you love football, we went behind the cameras One and Kyukaro, to show you the magic behind that replay. A journey that has been simply exhilarating. A journey that has showed you what Kenya is made of. A journey to learn and know how things work. And tonight, we finish 2013 in high voltage. We'll show you what goes on behind the scenes to ensure you have electricity so you can catch every episode of this unrivaled feature, How Things Work. Street lights, traffic lights, house lights, disco lights appliances in the factories you name it you probably need it because humans have an intimate relationship with electricity but have you ever wondered just how hydroelectric power is produced well wonder no more tonight we we'll tell you how on how things work The main component of hydroelectric power is water, water and more water. This is the Kamburu power station. Here up to 94 megawatts of power are produced. Power generation begins right here. This dam for instance holds up to 150 million cubic meters of water. This is how it works. Water is let in from the dam into a tunnel. Because of the pressure acquired from the dam, the water rushes in in high pressure and speed going through the tunnel into the powerhouse. A powerhouse is where the generation of electricity happens. The structural designs of power stations differ. The Kamburu powerhouse, for instance, is situated 90 meters below the ground. After the water comes into the powerhouse, The flowing water turns the blade in a turbine and the energy form is changed from kinetic energy, which is energy in motion, to mechanical or machine energy. Remember the physics? The turbine is connected to a generator through a shaft which rotates the moving part of a generator. It is in the generator where electricity is actually produced. The generator has two main components, the rotor and strata. The rotor moves while the strata remains immobile. When coils of the wire of the rotor sweep past the generator's stationary coil, the strata, electricity is produced. From the generator through cables, and uh, this energy is uh, passed through the cables to the main machine transformer. Once the electricity is produced, it must be delivered to where it is needed. However, there is a process before it happens. 
This is the Kamburu control room. Here, the supply of electricity throughout the country is determined by the men inside this room. Critical decisions are made here, including how much power different stations around the country need to produce in order to satisfy the national power demand. The display that you can see on the screen, I identify, it is showing the controller who is here. The amount of power the machines are generating. If you want to regulate Masiga power station, you open the Masiga power station. If you want to check, maybe they have two machines, machine one and two. If you want to do the operations for a specific machine, you select the machine you want to select, like this is machine number one Masiga. And then the power that is generating is 11 megawatts. If you want to do a lease, you can lease, uh, give a command for lease, and you lease depending on the amount you want to lease. And if you want to lower, you give a lower command, and then you give, and then the power you be able to, to, to go. After electricity is produced at the powerhouse, it does not come to our homes immediately. It flows here fast. At the substation, the transformers raise the electricity voltage so it can travel long distances throughout the power lines with minimum wastage. From the substation, it flows on the power lines and reaches local substations where transformers reduce the voltage so that the electricity can be suitable for various appliances in our homes, offices and schools. And that is the process behind hydroelectric power generation that ensures you have electricity in your home. wind up this year's edition of how things work but before we leave let's show you what goes on behind the scenes to bring you how things work take two we are not stopping this week we show you how power is generated take i don't feel that one wait can i walk yes i can walk yes. the coming installments of how things work we'll show you how okay but what is happening is Take. <laughs> you have probably seen them in mining, ah, mining sites. <laughs> now, for the last couple of months, we have tirelessly gone behind the scenes to show you how things work and how different products come to be. My name is Betty Kello. Do have yourself a lovely festive season.